when we look at adding fractions, sometimes it can seem a bit daunting, like, oh gosh, that's a step too far. So let's take it right back to what fraction is. If we have this whole watermelon here, it's been cut up into five different um, pieces. Each of these pieces are a denominator, and the denominator, D for down, goes on the bottom, and it gives us some information. For example, it's telling us that we have one, two, three, four, five pieces of watermelon. So it's for information purposes only. Now, if someone was to cut that piece of watermelon into two pieces, then I might say, okay, our denominator might change because now we have, if we eat this and this, I might say we have 10 pieces and someone might eat two of those, but out of the original, they may have only eaten one piece. Now, if I want to add those two together, this is where additional fractions can seem a little daunting because we don't add the denominator, but we can't add the numerators because they actually represent different types of slices. So that's why we use our times tables. That's why your teachers are always asking you to learn your times tables and reinforcing them because now they come in handy. How do we turn a five into a 10? We times it by two. And if you imagine a fraction, a bit like twins, and they, they, whatever one twin has, the other twin must have two, it must be fair. So whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator times that by two. Now I have a whole new set of fractions. And what's great here is that these fractions, they actually match. I'm just gonna erase this part here. And now, because the denominators are the same and they are just for information purposes only, 10 pieces plus 10 pieces, it still says as 10 because it's just information. The real working out happens with the numerator. I have two slices plus two slices. So how many slices have I had? Which is four tenths. So four pieces out of that 10 slices. Now, if I wanted to reduce that back down to its original fraction, as you can see here, I might say, well, what's four tenths? Because I've only got four slices here. We can again use our times tables to simplify or reduce our fractions. So I think of a table that goes into four and it goes into 10. And that's the two times tables. I always try and half first because it makes things easy. How many times does two go into 10? That's five. And how many times does two go into four? Two. So that means that two-fifths of my watermelon must be prepared for the party. Now let's go back to this part here. As you can see, looking at that logically, our denominators are just for information. They're just telling us how many pieces this watermelon's been cut into. Here we have three pieces and here we have two pieces. If I add these two together, my denominator stays the same when adding fractions as long as it's this in the same form as in fifths and fifths and halves and halves. If it's not, we do what we did before, which is change it into the same denominator. And then we add our numerators because we're adding this piece, this piece, this piece. And then we're adding this piece and this piece, which is two fifths. And then we add them together and we have two fifths and three fifths, and that makes five fifths. Now, as we know, five fifths is one whole. So we go back to here again, and we can see that five fifths, one, two, three, four, five, makes one whole watermelon slice. So think of it practically. If you were at a party and one plate had three pieces of watermelon, and another one had two pieces of watermelon, well, we wouldn't waste two plates. We would just put them all on the same plate and then we can use the plate for something else. So maths is very logical and it makes a lot of sense and we should be able to use it in real life. So just to remind you, when adding fractions, the denominator must be the same. 
when the denominators are the same, you do not need to add them. So, for example, again, 3 fifths plus 2 fifths. You don't need to add those denominators. They're just for informational purposes only. But you do need to add the numerators, which equals one whole. And also, just to say, when we're doing a mixed number, say one whole, or you might want to say five fifths, it's always helpful to make the fraction fit into the same space or kind of the same space as the whole number. Also, squared paper really helps. So doing this on lined paper is absolutely fine. Blank paper is absolutely fine. But for lining up your fractions, squared paper is very helpful. So I hope that helped.